Hi, I'm Marge Charmley, and I'm from St. Paul. I'm Anita Kozan, and I'm from Minneapolis. Welcome to Bi Cities, a show by, for, and about the bisexual, and the new word is bi plus, so that we can include everybody, the bi plus community, the GLBT community, our friends and allies. And this is a show that we are resuming after a three-year hiatus. And for 13 years, we came to you in Minneapolis and St. Paul, Minnesota. And we're very, very happy to be back on the air. I want to acknowledge my co-host, Dr. Marge Charmley, and our crew, uh, uh, Sally Corbett, our director, Daniel Thomas Cummins, our post-production editor, and um, on sound, we have Paul Craven. On lights, we have Tom Jones. Behind the cameras, we have Amu Amelia uh, Demeling and Mark Demeling. And we have uh, future Lisa on cameras. And we have um, Allison Mulvihill on ca Fabulous. cameras. So thanks to our crew. We're so happy to be back on the air. All right, this is our second show, and wow, do we have another fantastic guest for you tonight. And you know what we're so fond of saying in the past, Anita? Yeah. Is that we are the longest running show in the history of the world on bisexuality. In the past, for a certain generation, I love to say that we had more episodes than Roy Rogers and Trigger. <laughs> Many of you do not know who that is. <laughs> so let us say that we've been on the air longer than Rachel Maddow. We do not have as many episodes because she's every night. But yeah. you know, longevity. In terms of the something. chronicle, yeah, yeah, yeah. The the chronology. So. 2002 was when we started. We are so. thrilled to be back. We sure are. You did a great yeah. job of introducing her. That's not so easy without a you know. <laughs> a teleprompter. Over there, a teleprompter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We have to do this all in our head. You know, sometimes <laughs> our brains are a little bit like Swiss yeah. cheese. Mine is anyway. So. Boy. That's, that's been my buzzword this week, yeah, Swiss yeah. cheese. But we have a wonderful crew and a wonderful show. So uh, I want you to, to please introduce this amazing person who is here from out front, Minnesota. Out front, Minnesota. Well, we are very fortunate that we have a very powerful uh, social justice organizing project here in the by cities of Minneapolis, St. Paul out front Minnesota. And they have an incredibly important legislative effort that will be happening this year in 2019 um, regarding a topic that is near and dear to our hearts, but also very scary. Uh, there will be a bill that will be introduced in the Minnesota State Legislature this year to ban conversion therapy. And we have a person from out front Minnesota who is their legislative lobbyist and political organizer tonight, Emma McBride, who will tell us about these efforts. So Emma, thank you so much for being yeah. on the show. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Yeah, and you know, it's so incredible that you have been doing this kind of work since you were 14. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I started young. My parents got me uh, engaged in political activism at an early age. So I'm really excited to be here and be able to do this work. Um, a little sad that I still have to do this work, but grateful yeah. to be at Outfront. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about this bill and what Outfront is planning to do, and mm -hmm. you know, just carry on. And yeah. So conversion therapy, um, for folks who may not know, is um, a set of practices that are dangerous and discredited that try to change someone's sexual orientation or gender identity. Um, it's been widely discredited by the medical community um, and is actually really ineffective. Um, and not just ineffective, it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. So it can lead to things like PTSD, depression, high-risk sexual behaviors, um, thoughts of suicide, or actually attempting suicide. And so we are really excited to try to protect our community. Um, it's really scary and sad that it's still uh, a practice, um, a licensed medical practice that's legal in Minnesota. Um, overwhelmingly, when we talk about conversion therapy, people's reaction is that's still a thing, that's still legal. Um, and it's actually only banned in some form in 14 states plus DC. Right. And so here in Minnesota, 
We are um, seeking to expose it for what it actually is, which is consumer fraud. Um, it is a service that promises to do something that it cannot promise to do, um, and that actually leads to harm, um, and that's often um, not disclosed. Um, so we are going to ban it. Um, we believe that Minnesota's existing consumer laws actually protect people already against conversion therapy, and this bill seeks to clarify that and protect LGBTQ folks. Yeah, and another word for conversion therapy, which you may have said is reparative therapy, yeah. or sexual therapy, orientation right. change Yeah, efforts, or ex-gay right. therapy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how is this law that you're hoping to get passed in Minnesota mm -hmm. different than some of the other states, if it, if it mm -hmm. is? Yeah, it is. Um, so the 14 other states plus DC have banned it um, for licensed professionals um, to perform conversion therapy on minors, okay. so people under 18. Mm -hmm. Um, we know that there are uh, numerous other organizations out there that are performing conversion therapy um, as unlicensed professionals. I shouldn't even say professionals, as unlicensed people. Mm -hmm. um, and that's extremely dangerous. Um, it's estimated in a year that 20,000 people will experience um, conversion therapy um, by a licensed provider, but 57,000 people will experience it from an unlicensed provider. Um, and so we want to make sure that we are covering all LGBTQ folks, not just people who are under 18, who are um, you know, receiving this conversion therapy from licensed providers. Yeah, and it wasn't uncommon, I might wanna just interject at this moment in time for people do. who don't know me, <laughs> that um, I'm a licensed psychologist here in the state of Minnesota. And I was actually on the Council of Representatives for the American Psychological Association when they accepted a task force um, on sexual orientation change mm -hmm. efforts. And at that moment in time, I noticed that on your fact sheet here, mm -hmm. there is a statement from the American Psychological Association, which I feel like I could talk about, yeah. which just says that APA advises parents, guardians, young people, and their families to avoid sexual orientation change efforts that portray homosexuality as a mental illness or developmental disorder. So for many, many years now, the American Psychological Association, the American Medical Association, the American Psychiatric Association, probably the American Social Work uh, Association, mm -hmm. have all declared that this is not a mental illness. Right. And many of the efforts to change sexual orientation are based on the premise that this is a mental illness and that we can help treat it right. to make you better and normal, so to mm -hmm. speak. And we know that that uh, really isn't that effective and, and in effect uh, does harm to people, mm -hmm. which is why this effort is going on. Yeah, and we know a lot of um, parents of LGBTQ folks and LGBTQ people in general um, seek care um, and are actually um, frauded and coerced into treatments that they didn't sign up for. Um, they didn't know it was actually going to be harmful um, and weren't you know, aware that this was aimed to change them. Um, and so I'm really excited to expose that um, fraudulent practice um, and the coercion that often occurs. A lot and of there parents. There may be parents that just yeah. think they're helping their kid or right. helping themselves, but it's really, as you say, they mm -hmm. don't know what they're exposed to. Yeah, and they're not um, looking, they don't know which exact words to look for. Some of these services sound nice. Yes. Um, we're going to counsel your kid on their LGBTQ identity. Yes. Um, and that sounds nice, and yeah. if you don't know what to look for, you could miss it. We actually met uh, some of your colleagues at uh, Boy the Twin Cities Erased. Film mm -hmm. Festival. Uh, yeah. and there's a film out now about mm -hmm. conversion therapy called Boy Erased. And if you haven't seen it, it's really uh, well done. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you Powerful. bring that up. Yeah. Um, we are um, hoping to connect with Jared. We have some connection with him, so I'm All excited right. to have a conversation with him because the sad fact is that in these 14 other states and DC, Jared's case, um, he actually wouldn't have been protected by these laws. Wow. He was above 18, um, and Love in Action is an unlicensed provider. Um, and so we would be the only state that would actually um, protect people like Jared who went through these services above 18 or through an unlicensed provider. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about who Jared is and what the story of Boy Erased is, a little more detail. Yeah, yeah. so Jared Conley, um, 
was a young gay boy. Um, he grew up Baptist. His dad was a pastor. Um, and he came out as um, gay to his family. Mm -hmm. um, and they sent him to a therapeutic counseling camp um, called Love in Action, um, which is really dangerous. Um, they're not licensed. Um, and his parents weren't fully aware of what was going on. Um, so a lot of the tactics that they used on Jared and the other kids in this camp was actually kept hidden, and it, they, they told the kids to, to keep it hidden. Right. Um, and it just caused a lot of harm. Um, but Jared wrote a book um, and has, um, you know, has this movie out called Boy Erased um, to expose this. Um, and so here this in Minnesota, is a, a we're true gonna, story, basically. Yeah, Boy it's Erased. A true story. Yeah, and Jared is kind of the subject of the right the movie. Yeah. 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 It's a powerful movie. I recommend going to see it if you haven't already, um, or reading the book as well. Yeah. What you know, talk about the um, uh, the differences between um, services provided by medically licensed mm. and the uh, non-licensed people, and then also there was there's an issue with. Uh, that it will that the Minnesota bill will not interfere with uh, religious freedom. Right. <clears throat> yeah. So this bill um, will just protect people against um, services that are charging for conversion therapy. So in exchange of money, um, that's where the consumer fraud um, comes in. Um, so you can't advertise that conversion therapy will change will absolutely change your sexual orientation or your gender identity, um, and you can't um, not disclose the risk factors that come from um, these conversion therapies. Um, so this will only impact um, people who, agents who are charging for these services, both licensed and um, unlicensed people. Um, so churches um, can continue to, to counsel the way they want to counsel as, and in their private um, counseling services, but when they go to charge for it um, as a business transaction, that's when it becomes consumer fraud um, if they promise that it'll do something that it won't. So to pray the gay away, they can still do it. Right, right. So they can, um, you know, there's some churches that are going to um, have anti-LGBTQ rhetoric um, and counsel based off of that. Um, they are going to continue to, to do that. We are always going to have um, protections for religious freedom in this country, and we should. Mm -hmm. um, and so we are not looking to infringe on any religious freedom. We are just looking to protect LGBTQ folks from fraudulent business practices. Yeah. You know, it's interesting that that's an issue that comes up for those of us, uh, well, psychologists and other uh, licensed professionals, about how do we manage if someone is conflicted about their religion and their sexual orientation because there are plenty of people that mm -hmm. that come into therapy and you know they think they want to change and I think it's important for the public to know that you know we need to honor what what people come in the door with and that we respect mm -hmm. their religious freedom as well as what they want to do but we need to be careful not to say we can change this or expose them to harmful practices that's right. where the rub comes in. That right. you know, people have many options for how they might want to resolve any conflicts that they might have, mm -hmm. and it's our responsibility as professionals to help them do that in a way that's ethical and helpful and not harmful. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, yeah. what uh, what is the uh, situation? I know we've had an election, and mm -hmm. you know there were some things. You know, we were happy about some things, not so happy about other things. So regarding this bill, what, what do you see um, with your work as a lobbyist? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in 2018 midterms, we had a wildly successful election. Um, out front won 70% of our endorsed races. All right. Um, and we endorsed, I think it's something like 121 races or something like that. Um, so we had a really successful election. Um, we have a pro-LGBTQ governor who has conversion therapy, uh, con a ban on conversion therapy on his radar and on his Good. agenda. Um, we have a large pro-LGBTQ majority in the House um, and a brand new elected um, queer candidate, Hunter Cantrell. He's an open uh, gay man. Mm -hmm. um, he's in the House. And um, we have a, a min minority in the Senate still, 
um, but I think we can, um, we can convince some people um, to help us protect LGBTQ folks. It's a, it's a bipartisan issue. Protecting children will always be a bipartisan issue. Yes. Um, and I should mention that we have a really pro-LGBTQ attorney general um, who can help enforce this. That's going to be a really big um, aspect of enforcing this, con this consumer protection. Um, yeah. So you're looking at Hunter Cantrell in the House that will probably mm -hmm put his name to the bill. Yeah, How about in the it. Senate, who will we have that will sponsor this or help sponsor this? Yeah, so we have Scott Dibble in the Senate who has been a huge supporter and wonderful um, advocate for our issues. Um, he's also an out gay man, yeah. um, so he will carry the bill in the Senate um, with Hunter in the House. So you think that we have a pretty good chance of passing, at least in the House. It's, mm -hmm. it's going to get through the House. We have a governor that will sign it if it goes through. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a challenge in the in the Senate though. Yeah, yeah, we have a little bit of a challenge in the Senate. Um, but like I said, it's um, protecting children um, from harm mm -hmm. um, is, a, is a bipartisan issue. We've seen um, bills like this pass with bipartisan support across the country and in states that look a little bit like Minnesota, Illinois for example. Mm -hmm. um, so I have um, good faith that we can um, pass this bill in, in the spring. So how can our audience get involved? For people that may mm -hmm. want to be supportive of this, what kinds of things can they do to support this effort? Yeah, so um, there's a couple things. Mm -hmm. we'll have, we have a petition online okay. um, that you can sign if you go to outfront.org. Okay. Um, you can sign our petition um, and stay up to date on what we're doing around conversion therapy. Um, and signing the petition, we'll also send that to your elected officials saying that mm -hmm. someone in their district um, supports a ban on conversion therapy. Um, we also have our annual LGBTQ Lobby Day, which is Thursday, April 25th this year. Time and location is to be determined, mm -hmm. um, but if you sign up for our emails on our site, you will be first in line to get that RSVP link for Lobby Day. Um, we have more information on conversion therapy on our website, um, and we always put up events on there as well. I'm just going to put a plug in again for the American Psychological Association. There is a task force report which the American Psychological Association adopted in 2009 when I was on the council. I was proud to be a part of that effort. Yeah. Uh, that you can go in and read about the research and read about what the policy statement is for the American Psychological Association because it is important to know. Uh, the American Psychological Association does not take a stand on policy issues unless there's a well, a huge body of well-documented research. So we just don't jump into the fray of political actions because we're a leaning left uh, organization. Mm -hmm. We do it to protect people. So uh, feel free to go to the APA.org and then you can slash sexual orientation change efforts and that task force report will come up for you. Yeah. So Thanks for sharing. You can that. inform people, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, yeah, I, I feel really great about this bill um, and about the community support that we have. We have a really broad coalition of faith leaders, mental health practitioners, um, pediatricians, um, survivors of conversion therapy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we have a good team. You were uh, telling us that there are some other new projects also, unless there's something mm -hmm. else that you wanted to ask. Specifically no, no, no. about this bill. But we want to hear a little bit about you in a yes. few minutes, too. So. Yeah. We do. Yeah, yeah. Do. yeah. So Outfront has really grown over the last year, um, which means we get to add a little bit more to our capacity uh -huh. um, and have some new, some new projects. So we have a couple other organizers on our team. We have Junior and Alucci. Um, Alucci has been doing um, wonderful trans organizing, and they have actually... Um, formed a trans titans, um, which is like a trans justice table right. of um, trans organizers and activists who were kind of doing their own thing but now come together um, and organize around trans issues. Um, so they're, they're some of our advocates um, with Outfront. I'm really excited about that one. Um, and Junior is doing campus organizing. Um, so he's forming a campus um, leadership council for colleges and universities across the state. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's wonderful. Yeah. Well, so. and historically, Outfront has also been, uh, you know, involved in the anti-bullying uh, mm -hmm. efforts and so on and so forth. So right. Been, yeah. We still have our anti-violence program with mm -hmm. our 24/7 crisis hotline, and we provide legal services. Um, we have our youth in schools program, so we still have our uh, coalition of GSA um, mm -hmm. students, and we train teachers and advisors all across the state. 
on queer and trans issues and how to be better advocates and make our schools safe. And you were a part of your GSA at yeah. Johnson, Johnson, Johnson High School. High School. Yeah. Go Governors. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> um, that, that was really a, a wonderful experience for me. I was also at Arlington High School, for those of you in St. Paul who remember Arlington, what a fantastic school that was. I was very sorry to see it leave. But both schools had some great students who were very active in the Gay-Straight Alliance, which now is called the Gender Sexuality Alliance. And uh, everyone was welcome to be a part of things. And it was a wonderful place for students to get a chance to um, to, to kind of come to terms with who they were. I mean, mm -hmm. it was yeah. who, who you are, who are you today? Mm -hmm. and, and have a safe place to do it. Find yes. community, yes. fight against that isolation that we mm -hmm. often mm -hmm. feel and face. Yeah, and That's definitely the, the, sometimes a teacher would call me and just say, would you be willing to talk to this particular student until they have some questions? And, and I mean, the students definitely were choosing not to come out at oh, all. Okay after they were out of high school, mm. out of the house. I met a few students like that over the years too. So mm -hmm. it's uh, the, the more, the more um, allies that we have, the more uh, support that we can give the students yeah. at every level. Yeah. I mean, we've never won any movement without our allies. Exactly. Uh, yeah. so. Really. Yeah. So as we segue into another phase of our interview, We'd like to talk a little, what got you into this work? And um, you said that you identify as openly bi, pan. Yeah, yeah I yeah. identify as bisexual or queer is fine All right, too. okay. Yeah. So what drew you to this work? Because you started when you were 14. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if there's a particular moment in time that I began to organize around these issues. It was always something that I was really passionate about. My parents. Um, are pro-LGBTQ, um, I have um, queer family members. So it's just something that was really near and dear to my heart. Okay. Um, I was always a very outspoken, persuasive kid. I actually would write um, persuasion papers to my parents when I wanted something. So I got my first cell phone because I wrote a five paragraph essay um, with rebuttals in, <laughs> included in it as to why I think I deserved a, a cell phone. Um, and I was successful, so um, I just grew up in that in that mindset. My mom's a lawyer, and maybe that's where I got right, it. Okay. Um, but that's I joined um, a program called Youth in Government, which is a statewide mock government YMCA program, and just immediately fell in love with it. I fell in love with government and organizing, um, and I eventually became their executive lobbyist director. Um, and so we lobbied for same-sex marriage before it was even a thing anywhere. Uh -huh. um, and we got to see that come to life, and it passed with flying colors in our little mock legislature, and was signed by our mock government or our mock governor. Um, and we got to hold rallies, and we actually would go to the Capitol. So we would lobby at the Capitol and and sit in the representative seats. Um, and that was just always something that I just absolutely loved to do. And so from the age of 14 or 15, I knew I wanted to be a lobbyist for LGBTQ issues. Um, and like I said, I, I, I hoped that it wouldn't have to be a job um, yeah, yeah. by the time I got to, to do the work, but I'm excited that I, I get to work with Outfront and continue protecting LGBTQ folks, this time for real, in the real government. <laughs> what was it like for you to come out as bi, and when did you do mm. that? Yeah, so I think I came out around 2015. 2015, okay. Yeah, I actually came out to my family first uh -huh. um, in Ireland. In so, Ireland? Yeah, I was uh, studying abroad in Northern Ireland in Derry, and I was working at an LGBTQ health and wellness center. Um, and I'd been toying with the idea that I think I was bisexual for probably a year or two, uh -huh. um, but never felt like I was in a really safe space uh -huh. to explore that and to express it. Okay. Um, and then when I went to dairy and I was just in all types of queer and trans communities, um, that's when I really was like, yes, I, I am bisexual and my parents came to visit me um, and I told them over a meal over wine in, in Ireland somewhere, I don't even remember the city at this point, but um, they were of course really accepting of me. I was, I'm really fortunate to have uh -huh. a loving family um, yeah. Yeah, that makes and a big to difference. not have to go through something mm -hmm. like yeah. conversion therapy yeah. like a lot of my friends have. Yeah. Um, and 
When I got back to the States, um, I actually ended up in what appeared to be a heterosexual relationship. Uh -huh. um, and so I kind of went back in the closet, actually. Oh, okay. um, so to my family and friends, I, I still was bisexual. Uh -huh. yeah. um, but I didn't talk about it much. I didn't talk about it public publicly until I came to um, out front and I was no longer in that relationship and I felt the freedom to to be confident in who I was and say, hey, I can be bisexual in a straight community and I can be bisexual in the queer community. Yeah. And just finding that sense of community. And we can be bisexual in a relationship with, right. you know, with uh, a person who society might perceive us as being straight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That has been always so interesting to me. Yeah. That or a lesbian if we're yeah, the, well, and, and someone we're, that looks well, like we're a, a lesbian, woman, right? Yeah. If, a lot yeah. of our we're, identity is tied yeah. to the person that we yeah. are seeing. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, mm -hmm. And that's not fair. Their identity yes. is not more important than our own. Um, yeah. And so that's something that I've really come into um, and have been um, just so blessed to be at Outfront, um, where they're so accepting of my identity. Uh, yeah. You know, it's really thrilling to see young people. I was just at a family dinner. We have family birthdays a couple times a year. And I have a grand nephew, Eli, who's 15. And he was putting, building a fire in the fireplace. And he said, Auntie Marge, he said, this T-shirt I have on reminds me of you. And I said, oh. And he opened up his shirt that he had on. It was just kind of a plain white shirt. He said, well, look at the back. There's a rainbow. <laughs> and he said, my friend Oscar just came out as bi. <laughs> and I thought, how cool wow. is that? Oh, my gosh. And I wow. said, well, what was that like for you? Eli he said, he's my friend. That's cool. You know? That's great. So, wow. you know, when kids can come out and be safe and be yeah, around. It is accepted. changing. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and you're the generation and that's mm -hmm. making that happen. Yeah, so. mm -hmm. yeah, it's... Uh, it's, it's pretty wonderful. I love how you say it, the young people. The young people. <laughs> well, we're young at heart. <laughs> we surely Absolutely. are. Absolutely. And I heard this, a friend of mine said this to me, uh, Josie Zanverdino. She said, she's, she said, I'm in my, my majority years. Uh, and right. I, I really like that. Liked, I said, did you make that up? Yes. Yeah, so, all right, Josie. Yeah. So those of us in our majority years are like just loving the things that are being done by people of all ages. And oh my We're gosh, coming Marge, down the home stretch. I just looked so, at the clock. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so we want to thank you, Emma McBride, for all of what you're doing. And for those of you who are interested in helping with this legislative effort, please go to Outfront Minnesota mm -hmm. and keep up with the what's happening with it. Mm -hmm. And would you please join us now in our signature goodbye. Yeah, of course. Just to look at our camera over here and say uh -huh. bye, bye for, for now. now.